Now then, to start us off, let me just set the mood a little bit. About 18 hours after the military group moved in the base, Pluto 3-2 split off from its platoon. More patrols were sent. And these lone 12 operatives with their singular APC were given a hold order by their general command to simply wait. And wait they did. Sitting in their trenches, not their trenches, they're sitting in trenches, the civilian's platonic ideal of a trench. A straight line with some barbed wire up front and some loose tank traps assembled out front. No real corner cuts that would help block any fire if you were to pop on inside and take a look. A straight up entry path right to the right and the trench itself is unfinished. Not really a surprising thing, these are civilians. No matter how big their mechs are, at the end of the day, there's a lot of annoying crap that gets drilled into you in a, in a boot camp. And as they sort of sit in now in this trench, they sort of just look out at the night. As they do that, they see a large red glow emanate in the horizon, an impact sound kind of spreading throughout as multiple different shards fall from the sky and land on the ground. One of the mans, named Corporal Gromby, looks up at that, peeks over the trench. Man, Sarge, this is the fucking shit right now. The sergeant, Bandy, who's been sort of dealing with this all night now, just sort of checks over with a half glance. Yep, sure is the shit. You, uh, you doing okay there, Gromby? How many stims are you on? Man, I fucking juiced the whole damn container, man. I'm fucking wired right now. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, keep your eyes forward, please. Yeah. A bit of a silence. Corporal Logano starts smacking his thighs a bit. Just sort of a bit of a tick. Bandy just waits a bit. The noise kind of building up as one of the few other noises besides the constant sound of far-off artillery and impact noises for things far and falling from the sky. A general silence. Which is eventually broken when Cormor Gromby speaks again. Man, I bet the aliens get like no fucking pussy, you know what I mean, man? <laughs> Bandy stops and sort of turns to his left. Um, what? Man, they've got no, like, 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 think about it, man. What the fuck are they doing here, man? Why the fuck they come out all the way to this fucking shithole, man? There's like a little ring of people, and I, I've been fucking thinking about this shit all day, man. You know how fucking, like, you know how we're just like these built fucking gods and goddesses of muscular bodies? We can lift shit. We look fucking pretty as fuck, you know what I mean? I bet those aliens don't got a single fucking pretty soul in their goddamn body. You know what I'm fucking talking about, man? I'm telling you, Sarge, there's no bitches. That's the fucking problem. They, there's no one fucking pretty enough out there in the deep fucking space to be able to just fucking get with. And they're coming here because we're the pretty motherfuckers. Yeah? Yeah, man, I'm fucking telling you. That's how it works, dude. I'm... I... Sarge, I know you like big manly titties and stuff, but I, I gotta tell you, like, straight up, straight up, this is like... I'm, I'm fucking on to something here, man. They should send me on the diplomatic patrol. I can tell them where all the chicks are, dude. And dudes. I don't know fucking how they swing, man. But I, I'm, I'm fucking on to something here, man. I think you're on stims, Gromby. I, uh, what the fuck with my brain? It just makes me like... It's because my brain racing, you know? Like, this is all me. This is all original. This is all fucking... I'm fucking hooked, man. I'm fucking hooked on this shit. Yeah, uh... I, Bandy stops. Turning over to his left. Uh, hey, Grumpy, shut the fuck up. Slowly moving on. A person sort of like approaches, arms to their side, creep, walking creep. up. Creep, creep. <laughs> she moves in, looks at the trench, looks at the three people in front of her. Hey, almost heard you guys yelling over at the barracks. What's going on? You spot something? <laughs> 
Oh! Oh! Okay, get in here! And meanwhile... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, just like half a kilometer away, honestly not far at all, one group of people is doing some real work right now. <laughs> they have put together, well, they've assembled a bunch of loot, for lack of a better term. The Improp 2 engineering team has come together to finally take a crack at these fun little presents they found lying around. And let me just drag us on over there now. All right, engineering team. You've been spending time packing on mechs down into your bay where your printer is. But as you all just sort of stand there staring directly across, you're just staring at this large fucking bell of a mech that's too goddamn big to shove down inside no of this room. No, don't worry. I've got it. As you all... Bam. Should see now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you all stare directly at this thing. Sort of assembled directly across from you. Its entire form just kind of laying flat. It's looked like it used some form of connected, flotating uh, technology that allowed the limbs to sort of click together in a way. And as you sort of look at it, that's fallen to pieces. All the limbs were sort of collected, tied together, and just sort of deposited here as you just kind of look at this thing. Silas. Yes. You are staring at some preliminary information you've gathered from this thing, recording it down as you look across and just sort of get everything logged, just as a little bit of an info thing. How do you think Silas logs stuff? This is a weird, specific question, and if you need help, like, answering that, that's fine, but just tell me, what, how, how does this guy organize? Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I hate to be that guy, but my frame is incorrectly listed. Oh, yeah? <laughs> my one's the score, the scourge. Oh, yeah. No, no. Uh, the frame itself, you have all sorts of uh, frames, but that's the name of the lad itself. The ladybug is the name of every single the one model. of your robots, the model itself, <laughs> not oh. just the frame name. Yeah. My bad. That was. No, that no was, worries. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, well, in terms of my, my apologies for that then. No worries. Um, but yeah, in terms of how uh, he organizes stuff, um, it's it's very much a that it's it's very fastidious. Everything is categorized in in exactly the right places. If there is like any information which needs multiple tags, it always has them. Um, and in terms of just like making, in terms of efficiency of like uh, folders and and references and everything, there's never anything that's too superfluous it, it's all just exactly as much as you would want or need in terms of like um finding what you want as fast as possible he's highly optimized. worked yeah highly optimized he's he's worked in these kind of environments so much and it's it's a combination of his own preference of like he detests people who can't like properly organize information so he makes a point of never being that kind of person and also just having been in a culture where you know if he didn't organize information correctly then you know people would get hurt yeah so he's 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 kind of probably a little bit um frustratingly spending time on like proper categorization where other people might decide to do that later like every time he encounters a new piece of info, info it's just immediately tagged and and drag dropped into all of the correct places and referenced correctly yeah that kind of living was very important living from where you came from space stations earth nine you barely live on the planet itself if something fails everyone dies that's just the way it is uh but You've reached the limits of what you can do based solely off of outward glances and combat data, which is correctly inputted. You made sure everyone waited for everything to be inserted before you actually got to the work. And now, falls to someone else. Hey, Helena. 
Yeah. Helena, you are the, you're not, I wouldn't say the primary engineer, but you are certainly the one with the most experience, the most veterancy on this front. Yeah. Along with Silas, Duck, and Bonnie, you've sort of formed the primary bit of the engineering crew. But your specialty is definitely one for here. You're all about doing routine safety checks. It all, it's all about what basically you did back in your past. So the end result is that when it comes to someone to go pop this thing open and take a look, that's going to be you. Because you're going yeah. to do it right. She's just looking at this thing as like, why is it a bell? Uh, you, you're not quite sure. It's a bell. <laughs> it floats. It looks like a temple bell, honestly. When you hooked up with, when they hooked up with the uh, military, uh, some of the data that was sent over to you guys had assembled names or kind of call out names for these things. So you're aware that this thing is known as the temple colloquially almost mm. yeah yeah she'll she'll wait until silas has fully finished up everything that he needs to do before popping that thing open mm. because there's a protocol and she understands and respects this process immensely um mm. i think she's probably one of the very few people that like understands and is fine with silas's behavior she's like yeah he's just doing his job mm. completely correct yeah i think uh and and he he definitely it's one of those things where you know you you've been around people like Silas before and you know that he appreciates uh that aspect of you just letting him do his job not by telling you but by not t saying otherwise to you like if he's quiet and not saying shit to you it's because you're not bothering him in any yeah. way and he's, I think he's like wrapping up and currently like putting together the the equivalent of like a, um, uh, like a minutes sheet of just like, you know, what, when we're about to take it apart, like the stuff that we can all actively write down points on and stuff. Yeah. I think a part of this process too, she's been taking photographs of like every angle, close zoom ins on different parts. That way you can tag them with actual photos. So there's actual references to everything. So, but yeah. She'll just right. keep puffing uh, away on and, her cigar. Uh, so, um, uh, one other note. Uh, as you sort of puff your cigar and get ready to go, um, Raul, you have a gun today. You're here. You're not a member of the engineering team at all. But, honestly, someone needed to come out here because when you crack this thing open, there might be someone alive inside of there. And you've got to be ready for that. Still, just one person with a gun, huh? <laughs> Not quite. You check over Looks over here. at Pops. <laughs> you look over at Pops. Pops is the secondary contingency. As is that a fucking howitzer? See, <laughs> he has a large gun position, and he's got a little clicker trigger in his hand, just in case this thing gets up. And he's got his own tiny little pistol that he just sort of holding in his hand safely. As he kind of looks over, he seems tired, but... All of you have sort of been boosted up to try to deal with this yeah. using Raul, a few of your stems, and all of you are hungry as well. Yeah, Raul sighs a little bit, looks over at Pops. Hey, Pops, you know that if you fired that thing while sitting right beside the barrel, it's gonna deafen you for life, right? Uh, what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, it's it's his bad ear, he'll be fine. <laughs> Right, he actually uh, reaches down and he uh, pulls up and puts on some earphones, <laughs> which will only help a little bit. Um, but that's a twenty millimeter shell. <laughs> uh, Silas Silas pipes up and just goes, um, "If you're going to if you're going to insist on standing next to that thing, then might I recommend that you pick up some of our standard issue uh, construction ear headphones." Those things are sound dampening and designed for jackhammers and such. Uh, he kind of pops down, slides down this, and then moves over to the side. And he goes and puts on more of this extra equipment that you guys salvaged from the military and everything. And he gets in a more proper position. And he kind of just mutters to himself, let's just relax until we started. He <laughs> aims the gun up, has his trigger ready. And now, Helena, here comes the moment. Roll right. racks the the assault rifle in his hands. 
Right. So, uh, also, friendly reminder, Pops. When I'm on this thing, even if it moves, let me at least jump. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I trust you. All right. So, just yeah, I... Just managed to recover this one. Yeah, this is, uh... What's the condition of this? Like, is it torn to melted. fuck, or is it... It's oh, not, it's melted. It's, it's it's, yeah, melted. it stood on the fire. Yeah, it's pretty melted on one side, and it seems to be a bit damaged. Um, as you sort of go over, and... Almost as like you uh, kind of approach up, it's like, yeah, it's wild how they got this thing. Uh, you tap it, and almost on command of tapping it, the entire thing shakes, and you back up, and Pops gets ready to fire, but then it almost just... It blinks, and it's gone. Uh, what the fuck? I... Silas <laughs> Silas immediately begins like doing uh system scans to see if there is anything still there and yeah, we just is it can't see it. Yeah, you sort of do a system scan, you look around and uh as you kind of check. No. That thing's fucking gone. It didn't happen when you touched any of the other ones up close. But that one was just fucking you immediately start logging that data, Silas. That was a bit unexpected, but you do have other ones to look at unless they disappear as well when you try to pull them out. Do you have any data trails to track? Did, did it, it, it looked like teleportation, and that leaves traces. You, can, you could probably, um, hmm, I don't think you have any skills directly for this. Uh, Helena, you step back up, and I think you do. Um, I, think I will. I think what? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was just gonna say because this is something that Silas uh, would definitely do. Raul, you you say like, oh, that definitely leaves traces, right? And um, he kind of just like casually like turns around um, and goes, "That was precisely what I was thinking, Raul. This kind of thing does not go without some kind of sign of its departure." I may not be a, an expert in these things, but Helena, you, please, by all means, run your tests. Yeah, I'll give a crack. I'll see what I can find. Uh, also, that's not my fault. It <laughs> goes back to clicking away. <laughs> give me I'm a hardly here control. to scold you for something that none of us were expecting. I know, just making sure. Covering my bases. It's important. You know, paper trails and all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, uh, what am I rolling here? Is this a, uh, a hacker fix? A hacker fix, yeah. All right. Uh, probably no accuracy bonuses or anything like that, so I'll just no. whoop it up. Okay. Hey, yeah. that's you, pretty good. Um, you kind of go into these systems. This computer, a bit out of place technological-wise compared to everything else here, is a Bullworm-specific computer engine. This one is hooked directly up into the printer bay that lies directly beneath you. And this one has a lot of uh, systems sort of that are supposed to be used to usually track any sort of, um, and, and sort of clarify any issues that happen with printing, whether the user wants those to be tracked or not. So mm. the invasiveness of this scanning actually does help you out quite a bit as you sort of look into this um, uh, sudden shift that was that was a pretty advanced piece of tech. That was teleportation for sure. And as you sort of look at this, you realize there is a momentary link with a system you don't quite understand. You can see how it happened, but you can't really detect it as much. Mm. They got a whole bunch of weird scans in earlier when they went out on patrol. All this alien language and stuff that you guys are going to try your best to decipher, but again... Not only is it a different language, it's an entirely different coding language. Oh, boy. As you sort of look into it, though, you can tell that at least that model has something like a built-in technological, like, teleportation drive that was active the entire time, even after the rest of the system was disabled. It must have been some kind of, you know, uh, defense emergency mechanism. defense mechanism. Uh, however, uh... As you go and pull up the next one, you bring it down. Uh, let me actually do it like this. The lift goes down, and next up, you pull up a mech that was pretty similar in design to that one. It sort of shifts up, hooks on to the, uh, the same rail that you'd usually use to print your mechs, and mm -hmm. this one's much smaller, however. It looks like a torso with a bunch of scattered limbs throughout. It seems a lot more damaged than the other one. 
<sighs> well, luckily we have two. Um, Before we move I... on, yeah, please make a point of closing that that particular file that we had previously. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, kiddo. Good. Already has like a new file ready to go. It's labeled. It's got photos of this thing. She just gives a thumbs up. She's like, "Listen, I've been around the block, kiddo," and takes another big puff of her cigar. He he just <laughs> does a slight nod as if to say, like. Please continue. Yeah. All right. You want me to try and try with this one, too? Yeah. By all uh, means. All right. Well, I mean, if we just stand here and look at it, nothing's going to happen. All right. Well, you know what? I got a theory this time. Uh, as she approaches, is it reasonable to have some sort of, like, beacon device like obviously because we do like mining operations and things like that right um you do some excavation and stuff like that um yeah i would wager we'd have some sort of uh locator that we could place on yeah. lads Don't... so if there was a cave in yeah it's one of those things where um while you might have something like that you don't know if it'd be long enough range to actually figure out where this thing is, but you could you could give it a try to at least put it on it before it potentially goes away. You could try to what you do is uh you can give me another roll here, a, a hacker mm. fix to see if you can yeah. at least hide it just in case it jumps away. Yeah, you yeah. Maybe hide it so that if you you know maybe pick up on it at some point. Yeah, you kind of go up and you try to slip this thing on and hook it up to a wire, and then you realize. You have no idea how to get this thing integrated with this machine. Ah, shit. But, but, as you touch it and kind of like, you know, put it on. Oh, God. This one's still. It doesn't move. <laughs> Looks back at Silas. Pretty good start, yeah? <laughs> A better start than before. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we can only go up from here. Okay. And, uh, she'll mostly end up. Everything she does is very very slow because she's wondering if maybe um she had just like went too fast and like touched it too quickly so it like assumed it was like a projectile or something or uh her other theory is that maybe the guy woke up that was inside and went oh shit and hit the button and left <laughs> yeah so you uh, roll, on that note Raul, so, you wanna yeah uh rolls specifically keeping an eye on the legally distinct funnels yeah, <laughs> that came yeah. with uh, this machine. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything starts um, moving or glowing, uh, you'll be you'll, on it. You'll be on yeah. it. So, you go up um, and go to take a look at this thing. And um, as you sort of crack this open, Helena, <clears throat> you kind of go up to the cockpit area and you notice it's kind of broken. And so, you go in and you take a peek inside. Helena, have yeah. you ever seen gore before? In your times uh, on service with lads, have you ever seen a terrible accident that is truly, truly horrid? Maybe once or twice. I mean, she's been a personal victim of it with her hand. Yeah. Um, but, like, <laughs> maybe not to this level. Mm -hmm. It's certainly pulls back a memory pulls back a memory of your own hand coming off during the original that one incident a long time ago an incident i should mention turned out to be far from a tragedy for you yeah i made money However, yeah but as you sort of peek in you see a form inside that is most certainly dead but it's interesting on the report that the scout team sent in they described a sort of lizard-like, almost salamander in appearance type of alien. That's not what you're looking at. You see a rather large form, definitely taller than a human, but it's, it's honestly hard to get an idea just how tall it was. Mm. On the inside, a bit of its face is concaved in, but you also <laughs> don't think you really noticed much of a face in general. There was no head on this thing. Uh, or, no, there is a head on it. No face. Oh. Bits of twisted, almost branch-like appendages seem to have been broken and sort of hang on this head. And you notice the body is dense, is the best way to put it, at certain points. It's not particularly, um, like... It's sort of a weird thing where the body almost seems to... There's not a lot of excess fats or muscles on it. 
But at certain points, the body does get particularly large and buff and pretty intimidating in that way. But it also seems to slip down and sort of slim out at certain regions and the entire thing proportionally feels very weird to look at. You being a human, used to seeing people with meat that sort of fills out their body. And Ugh. on top of that, it's, it's a pretty bloody thing. Helena, come in. You've been staring at it quietly for quite a bit now. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's, um, they did a number on whatever this is. Yeah, um, the report said he dropped her Mac on top of this one. You can yeah. kind of see that crushing pretty clearly. Can I ask, um, how much, in terms of what we know about these things, um, do we know if there is any recorded, like, uh, knowledge of, like, <sighs> biological crossover of diseases and stuff? Hmm... Uh, clarify a bit more. Like, what are you trying to uh, like, look for here? Alien what? pathogens. Yeah, mm. like, because here's the thing, I see thing, what you mean. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, no, I get what you mean, yeah. Um, if I have you... to read a situation for it, I, mm. don't, I don't mind. It's uh, just like, me, it would... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to see if, like, this mm. is the kind of thing where I need to immediately be telling people to put masks yeah. on. Um, give me a read on situation, yeah. Yeah, I assume okay. we are all, uh, we are all Silas, up. you, uh, once you realize, you didn't fully realize the cockpit was open yet. Uh, after it do, you sort of immediately, uh, just started port orders. You know that even though there's, like, with this kind of situation, it doesn't really matter what type of pathogens they do have. Chances are they have an entirely different system of immunity, and it's chances are this thing is covered up or has its own breathing systems. All the same, you shouldn't be taking any sort of chances because you've had zero contact vaccinations or anything like that against any sort of diseases that would hypothetically exist for the aliens. Mm. In which case, he immediately um, just, like, uh, snaps his fingers and points to basically everyone in turn and just goes, masks, gloves, now. Yeah. You have no your masks and everything on, like, that's come standard with your suit. So you both snap them on as you sort of go and... Uh, you try to take a piece. Now, uh, Helena, I'm you're yeah. giving me a lot of these. Give me another hacks or hacker fix real quick. You got it. Uh, bada boopy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So, you uh, <laughs> peek on inside, take a look, and it seems like this mech is rather interesting. It has a, um, a, a lot of your mechs, a lot of the lads, and everything you pilot has a level of, um... I would say um, spinal implantation in it. Yeah. A lot of people on Earth 3, basically everyone has some level of spinal implants, and a lot of mechs are designed to allow for easy access and connection of your central nervous system to a mech to allow for easier movement. Um, this is what makes frames what they are, essentially. It is the connection between you and the external force that you wield. Um, but usually there are some things tied to manual controls for safety reasons. It does not seem to be the case in this mech. This mech, which is combined with a whole amount of autonomous separate floating parts usually, seems to be designed to very much be used almost entirely through the mind. And you huh. think you pick up... You thought the blood looked a little strange. You noticed it was like blue, a bit dyed darker at points. And that's when you realize that this cockpit is supposed to be filled with a blue liquid that seems to have drained out from the hole. Okay. Um, looking at what's left of the head, does it look like there's anything that would attach on like a, like a circlet or a helmet or anything like that? Maybe to have a more direct connection to the machine? You don't see anything on the head as you sort of take a closer look. And then, Helena, the body moves. Ah. Uh. The body shifts and almost responds to your presence closer to the cockpit. As even with a half-broken head, the body almost twitches and moves slightly. And a hand starts reaching up in your direction. Uh. I open fire if I have line. Uh, you, from this location... You see the hand come out, and Helena, you back up, and you fire some shots at the hand, and you immediately bolt down the stairs to get up close and try to just unload onto the foreman's side. You just kind of leap over. You feel the impact of gravity on your legs as you almost just feel the tense pain as you shrug through it, move up, 
climb up this thing and fire inside till it <clears> stops moving. Yeah, uh, two on the head, two on the chest, one in where the head is supposed to be. Yeah, you think the shots in the chest do a slightly better job than the one in the head, but it stops moving a bit, and it actually does keep moving a little bit. But it's um, this is weird. Muscular You'll want post-mortem death. spasms. <laughs> it seems like something like that. This is something you think you've kind of heard about before. Uh, can I? Will... Yeah, can, can I? Yeah. So yeah. I don't have my custom trigger right now, so I'm oh, just going to roll fine. a d20. Just give me a basic one plus two. Yeah, I need, yeah. To, need to get that in. But... Have I yeah. heard of that before? <laughs> hey, it's uh, pretty good. Yeah. So you've heard about this. Interesting enough, one of the surviving um, uh, farm animals that's made its way to this planet from the original Earth is the humble chicken. And this humble chicken has been observed to have a sort of strange effect when its brainstem is intact, but its head has been cut off. A sort of a central nervous system response that seems to trigger around throughout the body. You think it might be something like that, but you have no idea how that works with this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Did the mech act in any way, shape, or form when the body started moving? No, it was an entirely separate type of reaction there. Whatever's make this thing move or operate it is clearly shut off. And it seems like the damage that was done to it in the field due to the mech's um, mm-hmm. uh, timely landing on it, kinetic force of a sit, has actually probably disabled the, the strange teleportation device too, which allows you to actually look at this thing. <laughs> One on a six. Lucky bastard, that Jay. <laughs> so, Raul is going to shoulder his uh, assault rifle, uh, pull out mm-hmm. his handgun, and uh, attempt to fully drag the body out. All right. Uh, his yes. expression throughout this entire ordeal completely neutral, as if washing the dishes. Yeah. Yeah, Silas. Silas walks down the stairs and and starts uh, assisting, pulling out as well, and uh, just very, very quickly mm. uh, looks to Raoul and goes, um, "You reacted faster than I could order you. I appreciate the quick thinking. That was a sign the job to do. I'll do it, and you do it well. Yeah, thanks for that. Um... You both pull this out. Um, it's a bit heavier." Then it looks as you sort of drop the figure to the ground and sort of pull it aside. You're going to need to get this to duck at some point because this is about all the information you can glean from this. But Helena. Yeah. You go through a bit of a routine check. There's all sorts of interesting stuff you discover. Um, this flotation mic, the way that the um, uh, all of these uh, devices hover together. There seems to be a lot of designs, even some markings hidden in places that sort of mark some kind of purposes you're not aware of. This is, you're going to need so much more attention than just this to actually fully figure out. And chances are you won't be able to fully piece this thing together until you can manage to like, you know, take a good look at more of these because some pieces are damaged beyond relief, but. Yeah, uh, this is a very unlikely thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, looking through the machine and especially like on the outside of it um, because there, apparently there was another fluid in there besides blood. Yeah. Is it possible to spot at, like a, even a small amount that is not tainted by blood as pure as possible? Because I think cool. that'd be worth yeah. studying to see like what chemically yeah, it, that is. You might be able to do that. At the very least, you might, you you um, uh, sort of uh, get a vial, you get that, and that's going to be something you can send off later to try to scan and figure out, hey, yeah, maybe there's some kind of fluid in there. But yeah. As you sort of um, uh, cycle through, you bring out the next one and sort of continue the process. Mm. Moving up. Si- Silas is like mm. full on, like full on high, like high words per minute, like touch typing the entire yeah. time. And you mm-hmm. can just see like coming onto screen almost, uh, almost with like robotic precision is just like, you know, all of the normal, all of the talk that you'd expect in, like, you know, properly, like, office documents of, like, all of the abbreviations and, yeah. like, you know, just like, oh, this, uh, you know, at this time and blah, 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 it did this and uh, appears to be this. And or anything which he puts in as, like, personal conjecture is always in a separate section uh, mm. from, like, uh, anything that was yeah. just fact. Uh, 
so uh, on the switch between the previous Mac and this one, mm -hmm. roll, drag the body to the side, uh, put a, uh, a tarp, tarp over it, yeah. uh, grab his uh, quote-unquote PDA, I suppose, future PDA, <laughs> shot a message to Duck saying that we collected uh, body samples mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for studying. And before Helena gets down there, uh, Roll looks up, looks up to her according, and says, according to the report, this one was caught in the most optimal state. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? There's a, lot, there's a good chance the pilot mm -hmm. is still also in a fairly good state. Just you a minute disabled. As you approach this one, it's kind a, of interesting. A tactical reload. <laughs> yeah. You um, notice how the legs are off and uh, uh, arms were sort of blasted. They're hanging loose. But besides that, uh, there seems like there is a good stab into the cockpit at one point uh, with a heated blade. But all the same, a lot of things on this mech are mostly intact. And as you sort of go up to it, you also notice there's this weird type of growth that seems spreading around the entirety of the frame. Um... Silas, you get a little concerned about this. This, yeah, it seems to be a fungus, and that sort of sends a warning in your mind that if it's a fungus, you might need to scrub this entire place later. Uh, can I read a situation? Yeah. Or we'll stay cool. The one I would say, two. actually, no. I would say uh, you you just know that that's something okay. that you picked up from the last one. You don't need to roll for it. Mm. Um, it's just an, uh, something that kind of comes to mind as you both approach. Mm. And yeah, <clears throat> he, you, uh, were you gonna say something? Yeah. Yeah, he he notes that and immediately speaks up and goes, if any of those growths are reminiscent of fungi from, well, from our origin, from Earth, then those things are particularly stubborn. Make a point of not spreading around any spores where you can manage it and <clears throat> try not to disturb it in any way possible. We will need to do some kind of scrub down afterwards to make sure that this place is not going to be hosting any kind of alien microorganism. Microorganisms. Without yeah. anyone noticing, everyone's so focused on the mech. Pops hears that and then silently puts on a mask. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Silas thinks in his head, should have had it on already, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, all that thinks that too. He's like, what are you doing, man? We talked about this like 20 oh, minutes man. ago. He didn't yeah. hear it. He was too worried about the fucking howitzer. That's right, cool the bad ear. That's right, that's mm -hmm. on us. Bad ear, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> as you approach, you sort of kind of peek into this thing, pulling out a flashlight, and it, looks it like seems keratin. that the inside Kitan. the form seems to be still you it's kind of hard to peek on the inside but um as you sort of look you find an exterior um cockpit hatch which you sort of just blast open norm like you sort of open it up with a torch and just kind of heat through it until you can kind of pry it off is the <clears throat> is the outer shell let's call it that metal or is it like chitin or some yeah stuff like it's that? It's interesting. It does seem to be some form of extremely hard, like, biomaterial, but it it seems to be an alloy because it's definitely reacting like metal would in this kind of situation. You're not quite sure what this is made of, but it does also seem to host these growths on it. It's an interesting mech that yeah. seems to host these two separate types of uh, living organisms and then metal organism. Yeah, <laughs> Helena makes sure her mask is on very tight. Mm -hmm. I'm also noticing that there's like a little uh, gold eye. Does that look organic? Or is that uh, very clearly That does seem to be a LEDs. scanner. It seems to be almost okay. shut off on this mode. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an empty eye socket of, like there. You can kind of see cameras or other types of like okay. uh, readers yeah. on the inside. As you <clears throat> crack it open, Raul, you move up with the handgun and get ready. And on nah, the inside, I'm pulling the rifle out, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, yeah. You had the, uh, yeah, so you pull out the rifle and you aim in and it's still entirely. And this one, most certainly, you'd have to imagine would be dead. It seemed to have been cut down the middle by the intruding knife. And when you check inside, though, the interesting thing is that this is, looks like nothing like the other alien. That's what it is, different ones. Yeah. <laughs> I was about this to one, ask the physiology. This one almost appears to have a more insectoid type appearance similar to this. However, one thing you also notice is more of those fungi seem to dip in like roots and connect to the body like wiring wood to the, in the inside of like a computer system. 
directly to little patches on the skin of this person, this pilot, you mm -hmm. notice that it actually seems, on closer examination, some have burned away, but it seems the pilot themselves have fungi growing out of them. There seems to be a patch. The entire thing seems to be bipedal, multiple arms, mm. but fungal growth. How many arms? Throughout the thing. About six. Uh, you so imagine three one pairs. seems to be missing, but it seems like that. The, the law of, you know, yeah. um, synergy would demand yeah. that the other side would have to have as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Roll's going to grab uh, some zip tie handcuffs and secure the, the corpse mm -hmm. just in case. Just in I case, would be yeah. very careful because there is some weird shit going on here to the point where my engineering <laughs> skill, I think, is going to be borderline useless with all of this fungus mm -hmm. crap. One thing you do yeah, find is you do it find certainly a, seems more organic. Sorry, Christian. Yeah, no, worries. you do find a console out there front, and you think about something, and you pop down. Uh, you run, like basically, go running up here as you just like um, go up and run up and start grabbing some wires and shit. As you're just like, damn, this, this thing, the console's off, power's busted, reactor's offline. But if you hook this up, you might be able to turn this thing on. Uh, so, Silas, permission to do something maybe stupid. Elaborate rather than just giving me vague. I ideas. was getting there. I just wanted to see how mad you'd get. So I'm thinking that if we give this thing a little juice, we can turn it back on. Well, I'm optimistic we can. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that it is reckless and idiotic in order to do something like that. Right, but we could see how. Uh, how much juice it actually requires. We could see how this impacts with the biological parts of this thing. Um, and, you know, if it's truly a terrible idea, we've got a cannon. And points over at Pops. <laughs> Gives a thumbs Before up. we do that, at least let's just make sure. Roll pulls up the file on, on the combat data. What weapons did this thing have? Uh, it's hooked up to that weird thing on the back, which has been cut by this point. It had an assault rifle type weapon, a mech grade uh, heavy assault rifle, which hooked up to a mod that allowed it to fire specific weird types of ammunition. Uh, it was described mm -hmm. as capable of melting through armor on a good hit. Mm -hmm. And it was removed, or is it still there? Uh, it's removed. They went ahead and took that away and took the weapon away. Um, okay. By the so, in, in theory, all its weaponry has been secured already. Yes. Yeah. Before yeah. we do this, though, my one, re my one request is we remove the body entirely from it. My other concern is that if we do power this on, maybe it, because it's fungus crap, Maybe there's still some consciousness that can be pulled from the body. I don't know. I'm just like extra cautious here. I at least appreciate it to that the you're... Mac Bay. I at least appreciate that your hmm more impulsive tendencies are usually curtailed by logic. That being said, yes, a security detail would be more more than more than needed in this situation. Absolutely. I can't deny. I can't deny that we could gain some valuable information by reactivating it, but we are not doing so impulsively. We should get one of the lads in here, too. Uh, upon yes. this note, uh, you hear a door open on the left side, and you hear the sound of combat boots stepping through. Um, Silas, you look over, and you've already updated the information of every single person in this uh small squad's names as you see them almost hover above your grid um as you see the first lieutenant that walked in uh from what you've heard a, a verifiable pain in the ass walk on through the door and sort of step on up as he sort of looks and he just kind of looks at you poking at that stuff and he kind of checks back in your direction as he sort of looks directly at you and says before you know, he stuff says is, before mm, he yeah. says anything i i march up to this location and I just go, you better have a damn good reason for barging in on what is essentially a delicate operation. He looks directly at Koss. I do have a good reason. It's because I have authority to be in any goddamn location inside of this base. He are they wearing masks? At, uh, They are wearing masks, but it's kind of like how they have them now. It's very like thin yeah. masks. Well, I'm glad your authority got, got you here in the middle of dissecting a fungus-based mech that spreads spores. Also, I don't recall you being given such such permission unless he turns to Pops. Is that true? I didn't give nobody no permission. Sounds like you're in the wrong then. Get out of my 
station immediately. Um, can I put? Can I try to uh, take control? Yeah, yeah. Try to take control. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, okay. So everything you said. Okay, Silas. Everything you said makes total sense. You're fully aware that all of this is entirely true, and this is a blundering, stupid decision. But in a move that reminds you a lot of Bi-9 back on Earth-9, this man doesn't really care about anything but it's his own chain of command as he looks directly across at you, and he's just like, that mech is classified military material. Do you understand me? Your doing this operation needs to be approved by the higher brass. Do you understand that? See, the last thing, last time that I checked, we're currently in the middle of a war, considering that we just lost what is a insurmountable amount of people on this planet. We are currently undergoing a very fastidious and specific operation in order to ass assess the danger of this thing. This is not a matter of whether you can get your own gains out of this and whether you can develop your own weapons technology. This is a matter of us protecting ourselves and protecting you. And might I mention once again that you are currently standing in the place where there is what we believe to be fungal spores in the air. And you you're wearing the... nothing but a rag over your face. You notice that uh, the privates in the back are getting really uncomfortable with this continued mentioning of fungal growth, and uh, but the guy up front uh, just kind of turns back, gets safety masks on, everyone pulls out their gear, puts these masks on, and then says, well look, I'll tell you what, your operation is clear to go the moment you confirm it with our higher command. So if you would like, We'll get back on our patrol, but I'm shutting everything down here, and I'm going to leave a private in here to make sure you don't continue any more research until you have the proper paperwork. Understand? If we're truly going to start playing a game of higher command, then we can get in touch with Arca, which is our own higher command, and they can communicate with your people. Or would we like to cut through the bureaucracy and red tape and just act like fucking human beings? Alloway just kind of releases like a soft, like, just like, Arca. Arca's dead. Your chain of command's gone. You're alone out here. I'm the one who gives the orders now. Absolutely you understand not. me, sir? You see, funny thing about why I mentioned that, yeah, they are dead, which means that we're an independent entity, which means that we, points around to all of us, are in charge of what we do. And we do not answer to the military, at least as far as I am aware. Uh, Pop steps forward moving on up throughout this line. And um, he uh, kind of steps back and kind of moves up and he looks directly up at this man who, even though they're both locals of the planet, he's definitely just a tiny bit smaller than uh, Lieutenant Alloway as he looks directly across and he's like, um, just kind of looks up. Sir, as we've spoken previously, we are currently listed as a resistance movement, a partisan group, making our own operations. As per statement by your command, we are to abide by orders, so we will put a halt to our operations momentarily. However, all further operations will need to be, if you do want to end them, will need to be approved by your own chain of command by ordered right. You understand? He sort of looks directly at that. I doubt you're getting any ordered rights, but at the very least, if you put an end to this, yeah. Um. He sort of just, we'll comply. And he sort of like, kind of looks, looks over at Silas. Good. Sort of steps on back. Come on, let's go. Helena he immediately of... puts a hand in front of Silas and just goes, keep it cool. I'm with you, but this will just cause more problems. You can see that Silas is actually like, not moving to do any more engaging. He's actually like, pretty much immediately, uh, like, just staying cool now and yeah. waiting for them to leave. Um, Pops kind of steps back. Uh, you hear a slight muttering, and fucking Jackbox does it again. As these two just kind of walk on out um, and follow him. Out nice the superior door. got there. <laughs> uh, he, uh, one of them, uh, this lady who kind of steps back, uh, just gives like an okay sign and then kind of steps on out. <laughs> Once, um, not verbally confirming anything. They're out. Yes, Silas, what's up? The, the instance they're out, I turn around to Pops and I go, you would kowtow to such brutes. Yes, I would. He Why? kind of, uh, uh, 
he kind of looks over because paperwork's not ready yet. In fact, that's what we had to do after this anyways. Moon's going to need our help. Once we got stuff sorted, we could start getting right back to this. But we need more hands on deck because they just loaded us with a lot more shit than we expected. Paperwork in what sense? Stuff which will allow us to get them off of our base. Yes. We we were able to pull out the excuse that we're partisans, that we're working unofficially. Obviously, once we start doing contracts and start making money, that goes out the door. But we are still technically in a loose chain of command. And until we can kind of get ourselves independent, we're just stuck here. So... I would ask all three of you, if you can come with me, I think you have the assembled skills for this. We're also going to get a few more people. We're going to meet in the command center, okay? Yeah, sounds good. Before Before anything else. Mm -hmm. Disinfection. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yes. But I want to make one point clear. I was operating off of information I did not possess, and as a result, I made a fool of myself. That will not happen again. You will keep me updated on exactly what is going on with all of this, first and foremost, before anyone else. Uh, Pops just kind of looks, and he's just kind of, uh, he just kind of closes his eyes for a second, and then opens them again. We're going to make sure everyone's informed. And if there ever comes a time where you need to be informed before everyone else, I'll make sure it gets to you. You should, uh... Make sure you keep up with Moon on that stuff. He kind of steps by. All right, shower time. Yeah. What about uh, the uh, the corpse? I feel like that should be removed first and locked all right. down. Just shut Duck it back is already down. on his way. Yeah. Doc should be able to take care of it. Make sure you just... Can you lower that damn Doc? Yeah, yeah. You go yeah. Roll, roll also, like, now that he realizes that he forgore... He uh, also handcuffs the other body that he shot. Yeah. It goes down, and with that, the mech is loaded back, and you all prepare to head out to do some goddamn paperwork. Hell yeah. Before, real Mm -hmm. quick, there's just a little self-indulgent scene right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Raul goes to the restrooms after all this. Mm-hmm. And he's like stone faced, uh, efficient work mode. Closes the door, verifies he's alone, lets his hair off loose, kneels near the nearest bathroom stall and just throws up. <laughs> yeah. Thinking about shooting that alien. Yeah. Yeah. You take Starts that hyperventilating. His hands are shaking. And you just have a fucking breakdown in the bathroom for a moment as that image flashes in your brain over and over again. Every single flash of the muzzle, like a separate picture, lighting up the form that died slowly in front of you. Meanwhile, so I'm fucking telling you right here, man. I don't, I don't, I don't think the fucking it. Look, I think this. Uh-huh. I think they. I think yeah. the fucking government crashed the, the goddamn government. ship on top of Ingress. You know what <laughs> really? I'm saying, man? Really? Yeah. You think it was the? Oh my god! No, the tell U- me more. The UEA. Look. <laughs> yeah. They've had look. Look. Yeah. yeah. Those fucking fascies on nine. Yeah. They've had enough of how goddamn fucking pretty we are. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Look, they must have Go made on, a deal. Explain. They must have made a deal with yeah. the fucking UEA authority, and they were like, "Look, yeah. we know Angrest has your fucking prettiest motherfuckers on your planet, yeah. okay? Something you got, you guys show. get sun, you know." Yeah. He's, he kind of stops. Why the fuck are you so pale? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were in the middle of something. Please carry on. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you got it. You got to see that, like. You fucking like like full ass fucking you you got you got the fucking bronze muscles all that yeah, yeah. shit punching through you're all, why the fuck are you so skinny <laughs> yeah uh sorry bronze muscles punching yeah, yeah, through yeah. so so like um <laughs> when you guys like move on through and do all this sort of crazy shit you gotta understand yeah. that when I'm like talking I'm talking fucking like yeah pretty as fuck and yeah. and like Tanner thinks so too back there our yeah. boy Tanner uh poor fucking Tanner man he lost his family and shit that's sad as fuck uh but <laughs> but like you got to you got to fucking get this man this this Raphael, fucking shit is this is where i lost my parents <laughs> <Calabunga>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rami's just kind of keeps going on as he's just like, so meanwhile, they, they fucking drop this goddamn shit on you so that all you fucking pretty people die. But, yeah, but yeah. lo and behold, you guys out here kicking ass, saving our ass, yeah. your pretty ass fucking faces. Like, holy shit, man, I want to bank. Brandy immediately just, Rami, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny's expression shifts the slightest amount. Those dead eyes twitching over to Bandy. Just like, <clears throat> so you guys were out engaging before we were. How was holding out against those things? Oh, man. Uh, Bandy just uh, immediately interrupts. He's just like, um, their enemy frames are tough motherfuckers, okay? That's just all there is to it. They've managed to take down our other... Uh, APCs, and it seems like in general we've been having troubles all around and all that shit, you know? You still managed to bail us out with the usage of simply an APC and little else. Honestly. Hey, big uh, machine gun's a big machine gun, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she actually raises a cup of coffee. Sorry, rations are low. I only brought over so much. You guys want, like, bag of chips? He kind of like reaches around and he, uh, you guys are low on rations. Mm. You want to be in my MRE? I'll trade it for the rest of the cup. Yeah, done. <laughs> she he, he passes trades. over an MRE and <laughs> trades and he like pulls down his mask and like holds his breath and he just drinks down a bunch of coffee, pops it back <laughs> up and he just kind of like, uh, takes up his gun and then kind of leans back again to keep watch at the horizon. Um, Keeps the aim a little more... Uh, no, she leans over before saying this. Keeps the aim a little more steady than stands. Yeah, he kind of uh, <laughs> just sort of uh, leans over in that direction. What the hell are you guys doing out here? Uh, hmm. You talking long term or short term? Short term. Uh, you guys um... have a long term? <laughs> Long term, I guess, we're very technically construction company. Um, though you wouldn't guess it based on everything that's happening right now. I don't know, really know what the future holds. I'm just hoping to see tomorrow as the big one. But um, in order to do that, uh, well, the higher ups of our organization decided it's time for us to pull our own weight. And uh, we decided to use large scale construction equipment to uh, do that. Kind of shocked it worked. <laughs> I'll fucking be. <laughs> well, I don't think... Uh, uh, Algano speaks up. The uh, otherwise silent corporal in the back yeah. seems to be kitted out with a bunch of tech. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure the thing that uh, pulled you through was the stolen military tech. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, they just sort of nod as they just kind of like uh, put their head in like, yeah, Algano raises a good point. I mean, hey, what did I just say? Big machine gun. It's a big machine gun. It works. <laughs> Not exactly standard issue construction equipment. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Rami she, speaks she, up again, finally finding his end on the conversation. Man, piling a big fucking robot sounds cool. so cool, man. If you die, can I have yours? Uh, you know... I, I'll give you like an MRE for it. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Didn't really think of it that way. Um, would that fly with UEA? I don't fucking care. I put it in your will or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Gromby. Gromby. You want full name? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Louis no. Gromby. <laughs> From fucking Everett. Louis Gromby. Put it in your will. They'll find me. <laughs> fucking so Gromby is just the opposite of the fucking corporal, the <laughs> lieutenant, whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so he sort of like lightly smiles looking over to Bandy again. There you have it. If I wind up dying, it won't be stolen military equipment anymore after all. Looks like it'll be going back to you guys. <laughs> Hell yeah, we could use a mech. Uh, someone stumbles on up and he kind of turning his head to the attention of an approach uh surprise birthday appearance um <laughs> no fuck oh it got me been drink <laughs> yeah uh asher just birthday, kind of motherfucker. yeah asher just kind of wanders up uh to this uh gaggle of freaks uh <laughs> How dare you, Bandy's very nice. He's probably been <laughs> listening to this conversation for like a hot second and just kind of oh, like yeah. approaches and just looks at them and goes, um, the stolen military equipment did help, but it wasn't exactly the pushing matter of it. 
at the end of the day, machine guns may be machine guns, but if you don't know how to point them, they're useless. Oh shit! Yeah, you got you guys. Got, what you got? Some fucking big military guys here. I wouldn't say I was exactly military. No. You look fucked up. <laughs> Sunny turns over. He's like, "Hey, chill, Arca One." <laughs> she very intentionally calls him Arca One. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Arca One's definitely experienced, and he's got the vibe. But like, you know. It's like what he was saying. It comes down to experience. Did, but still, did you know that was my first time flying? Oh, fuck no. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, probably because the uh, rocket pack we attached to the back of the uh, lady was highly experimental. And that's the first time it's been tried on anything. That, that is an experimental uh, stolen uh, military tech. That homemade Arca invention. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit, you're so hot. Holy, oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> Bandy kind of leaves over. Grumby, don't hit on the natties. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, that fuck. Means. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Agato kind of looks over at the new uh, entry and it's like, um, d did you all, um, have you all been properly keeping track of your ammunition usage? Um... Well, probably we've been keeping track, but we don't really have that that much left. I saw you had an experimental tech suit on there, uh, an e-warfare machine. Um, yes. Where'd you get that? You can tell me. Uh, he, they quickly reach up and click their helmet a few times. Recordings are off. You've been recording this? Yes. <sighs> he just sighs. <clears throat> Standard well. issue. I don't ask where the things come from. Our tech team just supplied them to me, and I used it. Cool. Okay. That's all right. Uh, they quickly go up and click again and turn on all the recordings again. Uh, they kind of look over. Fanny likes to keep this stuff. Recordings? Yeah. You know those are only going to get sad with time, right? Fanny kind of reads over. Well... I'm personally gonna laugh my ass off looking at those things a couple years down the line, even if Grommet's dead, because honestly, uh, I'm thinking that I'm just gonna retire and become a vid guy and just post all of Grommet's fucking rants online and get rich. <laughs> Sunny laughs. Sunny literally <laughs> cackles next to you. And then starts like, she's like, like honestly toasts with the mug of coffee and she's like, honestly, I've heard of worse plans. Good luck. <laughs> And that's brandy for ya, fucking cruel. <laughs> hey, Seti, mm. you realize you just heard, you just heard, you just heard a call sign, a nickname, oh. Brandy. Brandy, Bandy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brandy, how'd you get that one? <laughs> um, uh, take a guess. <laughs> She blinks a few times. She's like, oh, okay, huh. Turns over, looks at Gromby. You earn one for yourself? No, I'm Gromby. <laughs> God damn it. Looks over, to, <laughs> looks over to Bandy, huh. Well, if you're gonna be capitalizing on his rants, I feel like you should at least give him a call sign. Uh, he kind of looks at you. Nah, that's fucking Gromby. <laughs> <laughs> Grommy's Grommy. The biggest fucking idiot on the earth. There's no other word you could use for it. <laughs> Sunny's expression sort of shifts over. She's like, well, nice to meet you, fucking Grommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that, actually. Fucking Grommy. I say it enough fucking times in the day. He kind of looks over at Grommy. Jeez, I feel like a Greston and shit, Sarge. Hey, Nano, can you send this to, like, the fucking Grumby starts getting a little slurred and quieter as he's just like a fucking um uh, oh. uh captain yeah tell the captain I'm I'm being harassed right now <laughs> I'm being harassed <clears throat> stems wearing off I need more mm. hey <laughs> hey jaw man you got a stem no I'm on patrol right come on. <laughs> Well, good thing you have two other people. You can sleep, and the others can yeah. cover you. 
Yeah. Bandy kind of looks over. Hey, Grommy, remember when I told you to shut up? <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, well, fucking do it. <laughs> Fu fucking Grommy, are you. F oh my god! <laughs> kind of gives you a pat on the back with a big, strong exosuit slap. And he's just like, <laughs> I like this one. What's your name? Uh. Name's Seti. Um, nice to meet you. I honestly, I found all the stories about how you got over here and, <clears throat> you know, managed to survive in the middle of a war zone occupied by enemy mechs. Pretty yeah. interesting. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what people do. I don't think I met a single soldier not trying to survive on a battlefield. Yeah. She sort of says with a light grumpy. smile playing across yeah. the lips. <laughs> You met the first one now. <laughs> first one today, motherfucker. Heat, 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 heat! She, uh, she actually looks over at the two of them and is like, okay, well, you asked about my long-term plans. What are you guys planning? Uh, Bandy uh, kind of looks over. I'm going to get enough uh, enough uh, brownie points to get up to major. Do my goddamn turn, and after the war's over, I'm just gonna go somewhere else. Maybe I'll give speeches and some shit. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm not thinking about that kind of stuff. Just he kind survive. of looks over. I record my videos for my future career as a vid star, and then I just fucking take naps. He kind of just <laughs> leans over and looks over the edge to the no man's land in front. Grumpy here wants to be a singer. I don't really? fucking want to be a singer. <clears throat> I want to be like. I want to be like the man who, who like, is so fucking pretty that someone else sings for me and I'm like up there and everyone's looking at me and they're like, God damn, Brombie's so fucking cool, but I don't got to do shit. That's what I want to be. Those fucking celebrities don't got to do fucking shit out there. Well, I love the synthetic voice nonsense bullshit. I want to be that. I want to be a pretty face on a poster, get money and fucking eat cake and pass the fuck out. <laughs> Glad that nowhere, no matter where you go, soldiers are still soldiers. <laughs> oh, God. Sonny's, Sonny's having a fucking great time. <laughs> uh, well, now, after oh, yeah. you did go and come out here to grab Seti to bring her back to the fucking uh, command mm. center. Okay, Seti, enough fucking around. We need to get back to base. <laughs> <laughs> she like sort of stands up. I'll leave the rest of the cup for you. Puts the cup down in the trench and like, mm, like hauls herself up and out. Okay then, uh, let's report to the boss. Mm. Paperwork. Probably. Cool. I got a report. <sighs> you both move off. And as you go off, Brahmi waits a second and then. This is still an earshot of you guys as oh, he just kind of kinda yells out, uh, Man, I want to fight at places with hot girls more often, Chief. Man, you think I got a fucking chance? Go to fucking bed, Grumby. Based, <laughs> <laughs> Grumby. I... <clears throat> within earshot of Grumby, so on the base. <laughs> Yes, yes, the entire base. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, that was great. Yeah, that was <laughs> Christian, I shake your hand. It's fun to soldier banter with you. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, meanwhile, uh, everyone sort of regroups together, and uh, you all kind of, uh, you sort of find the engineering team uh, positioned outside and getting ready to kind of go. You, you were kind of waiting for them as they took a little longer to get out because of this whole nonsense with this first lieutenant. And eventually, you all kind of move on inside the command center, moving uh, after the showers, taking a nap, or not a nap, what the fuck? No, no naps. Uh, uh, taking <laughs> off up. your masks, <laughs> throwing up. And eventually, you all kind of walk on inside. And uh, as you do, um... You enter the command center. Oh, that's a lot of paper. <laughs> you step in, and when you see that's you see the form of logistics uh, officer Moon hunched over, sort of like poking up behind this command center every once in a while, and a whole lot of papers have been sprayed around the floor. Um, you, uh, this is like this is not really a sight you've seen before. 
for the most part, Moon has always been to her own devices, never really sharing much information and always keeping everything on her pet. But this is a level of anarchy that is almost uncharacteristic. And that means when you move forward, this is probably the first time you've seen Moon like her normal self ever since the incident. Oh, God. So oh, this looks organized. <laughs> yeah. She looks up. Shut! Sh shut up. She <laughs> leans down and um, books over. Um, it's not enough. It's not enough space on these shelves, on these tables, for all these damn papers. Cannot sign this on digital. We. She's kind of moving around. Uh, Silas, um, this is not how you would organize anything. There does seem to be a uh, some kind of method to it, but it's not an easily mm -hmm. translatable method for you. Uh, he he in, kind of sees that she's losing her shit and just uh, realizes that it's just going to be a bigger problem for this entire process uh, if, if she doesn't calm down. And he just goes, Moon, I understand that you have a lot on your plate right now. And in terms of space, it should be made clear that we have plenty of floor space. We have somewhere else that we have a much larger area, and he gestures over to where, like, the rest of the gang is, where we might more effectively organize these things, and then we can discover a place that they might par good, properly fit. Good. Take take papers. Um, she starts collecting them up, and uh, she goes over and grabs some of this uh, coffee in this cup, kind of takes it in her hand, and then uh, starts grabbing the papers from the tables and everything. This this stupid motherfucking lieutenant is getting on my ass, and I'm through with it. She steps forward, moves up, takes up more papers, and just starts kind of huffing around, taking up everything she can, and she sort of looks I over. Feed. Well, <laughs> papers, come on, come on! She sort yeah, of just starts no, no, gesturing no. around as, uh, Helena, you start taking some stuff up. Uh, Silas, yeah. you take some stuff up, too. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move up to Moon, and as I'm still puffing the cigar, girl, please, breathe with me. Just, come on. Just <laughs> Just, it's okay. It's you've got help now. I apologize for the very poor attempt at humor. We are gonna get through this. Yeah, we've also just met the lieutenant, swell fella. So just My, come on. It's it'll be all right. She Might I ask you a question about the lieutenant? Sounding as you have interacted with him more than I have, Moon. She kind of looks over and it's like, yes. What? What kind of person does he strike you as? A complete incompetent buffoon. Straight out of Officer Caffey into Officer's Academy onto a military situation. He has no idea what he's doing. All he can rely on is his chain of command, which they drilled into his head in this stupid goddamn military school. Mm. I had gotten the same impression. I had made the mistake of underestimating him <laughs> and believing him to be some sort of... Hmm high-functioning person who had some kind of logic in his brain that he might back down when confronted with aggressive orders. I was wrong. It did not help that I did not have the information that I needed. He uh, actually turns his head towards Pops when he Pops when just kind of gives that. a look. It's just like, you were on engineering. Didn't expect that asshole to start barging into everyone's business. Um... <clears throat> Uh, Moon kind of looks over. You should just start expecting that stuff pops. She puts down the coffee cup and uh, she turns over to Seti, who's kind of far away and seemed to have been backing up a little get, bit. <laughs> her eyes just kind of pierce in your direction. What? Are you here to help? Uh, t t yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, t I'm totally here to help. <laughs> she yeah. no need gestures at the floor. <laughs> Moon, Great. I res I understand that you were riled, but there is no need to be aggressive. The lieutenant is not here at this exact moment. Can, can I use stay cool on moon? Yeah, sure, do that, yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, like, once I heard she was a logistics officer, I was like, oh, she's gone. <laughs> oh, she's gone, yeah. I don't think can that's I, time. Can I use... <laughs> Can I, can I alternatively use take control? Because I've basically, like, been... Yeah, yeah, you know, give me a take control as well, yeah. Maybe, maybe we team up. <laughs> Damn. No. You can't you can't quell that anger. No, this is this look, uh, this is for better or worse, this is she's a little more stressed now, but this is also just sort of how Moon has been in the past. She seemed to have calmed down a little bit weirdly enough after the incident, perhaps <laughs> processing as everyone has, but now it seems like this incident has gotten her back to a bit of her normal self as she starts to uh pull these papers aside and uh, as she sort of looks across at everyone, um 
Jeez. The rules already working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just kind of sit up. You you feel a bit of a sour taste in your mouth, even though you're trying to wash it out with water in the bathroom as you look down at papers. And uh, funnily enough, the paperwork does calm you quite a lot. It's the normal uh, thing. The routine. You know? mm. uh, am, am I able to spot that? I I was a party goer, so I know like the the look of you like might, you might <laughs> be able to spot that. Yeah, you have spot. Give it a go. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can I can spot that because like yeah. she she's had a couple of wild nights in her okay. life. You kind of you kind of look at that. It you want to bring it up, maybe maybe you don't, but it's a bit of a weird time. You might be able to get in there, but you do notice it. I would say at the very least, she'll she'll leave it at that. She's <laughs> like, uh, I I don't want to stir up trouble right now, but she's gonna keep an eye on the boy. Um, the as boy. Moon kind of sits down, she looks directly across, um, at everyone. All right. All right. We've got some stuff to work on. We've got some things. I've, it's not just writing down, filling out forms. We have a lot of considerations if we're going to officially make this a business. Uh, she sort of looks around. I've been dealing with most stuff, but there's annoying questions that people need to answer for me because I can't fucking come up with all this shit by myself. She looks over directly at Seti, and she's just like, um, you're standing on a paper. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, Slowly. Yeah, come, come over here, Take kid. Come sit. On. Literally, yeah. literally, as Seti yeah, yeah. gets over, she was she was trying to negotiate her way over, picking up a chain of forms to get over to Elena, like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, the flight unit worked. The flight unit worked. It uh, did? Yeah. No, the soldiers out there think it's stolen military tech. It worked so well, they think we're on some advanced shit. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> she like double high fives you yeah. in the background. Moon checks over. Cut it down. Paperwork. Right, 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 right. right. Hey, you, yeah. want a, you want a cigar? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to smoke it because Moon will kill me, but I'll take it as a trophy. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can chew on it. No, I'm going to frame it. It's one of Elena's cigars. <laughs> oh, girly. girly. There, there's not much. Of, actually, if you want a real good one, she takes the yeah. one out of her mouth. This one's used. <laughs> Plus, it gives me an excuse. Starts another one. <laughs> and my I'm first battle trophy. Out. Done. She oh. puts it away. <laughs> when, it, when this is all done you gotta tell me everything about it like uh the heating was fine right uh <laughs> flash flash back to reactor stress critical imminent fail uh imminent failure yeah it was great yeah, mac is melted down <laughs> Yeah, I, as much. I mean, you're alive, right? Like, yeah. so it clearly oh, worked. No. Raul speaks no. up over the edge for a second there. <laughs> Helena, her mech is half melted down. <laughs> but not completely, and she's still alive, so. Listen, so you, you guys you guys broke into that angel thing, right? A little bit. Um, that, not a... Raul stops. <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> Helena's expression changes a bit, too. So... Uh, yeah. That thing was like a, a, a top of the line, like flight. It was always and inevitably. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Seti, yeah. are you here to chat or help? Uh, b uh, both, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> no, allow me to correct you. Mm. You are here to help, not ah. chat. <laughs> Oh. Her, her expression her expression falls she's like mm. uh, right 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 uh, as she like she moves away from silas and quietly mutters i was gonna thank him for his work on the flight unit too oh, <laughs> oh silas come on you old prick in the mud it's okay to work and talk moon speaks up no no it's not we are on a strict timeline everyone sit down with papers i'm done and with this stack give me the next one <laughs> that is that is precisely the work ethic I like to see, and none of uh, you have been following suit. Ah, uh, correction, <laughs> buddy. I'm a multitasker. Hands you organized papers. <laughs> yeah, and that is what and that is the kind of work ethic which I am surprised oh, by oh, consistently. No, stop, with stop, you. stop. Stop filling out papers. She she says, Look, we need okay. She stops. Um, I need you all to put those back. There's details on there we need to change. This is she kind of stops. I haven't filled a single thing. I'm organizing them. 
Yeah, I'm okay. not writing okay. anything. I'm just right. listen. Okay. At this point all in time, right. it's a a bombshell went off. I'm just trying to organize all of like based on okay. departments and dates and things. All right. I'm, yeah. Okay. Si Anakin. Silas has already got stuff together and has been like basically yep. locating the page numbers of like <laughs> yeah. singular forms and actually collating uh, them. Okay. Kind Damn of doing the same. Writing. Things. All right. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> She kind of glares over. Go over to the printer and get new ones. Uh, she points uh, yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll and go, uh, go. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, um, let me just uh, break character for a moment. Mm. As um, you broke her. I, broke her. <laughs> I will break you. Um, <laughs> to let you guys know, uh, there's some stuff we have to do, and in order to do our business. Uh, we need to give oh, Moon shit. enough details so that she can file a good report. Moon yes. is excellent at paperwork, and so is Raul, and many others here are very uh, technically proficient in that subject. Um, but there are some things that need to be talked about. So a number of staff have been gathered here. Pops is here. Moon is here. Um, so uh, first off, <clears throat> one thing on the clock that's been pretty successfully handled, you all have successfully asked the singular question of what are we fighting? Who are we fighting? You have a report on some of the aliens, and that's where we're going to start. Um, <clears throat> as you sort of can bring up now what you found before we begin on the paperwork itself for bookkeeping reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, one of the most important things is that we have a report from Asher that one is salamander-like, but we have confirmation that one is insectoid that works with fungus and other is large. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so she kind of looks one strange form, I suppose. One larger form, insectoid, salamander like multiple species. We have visual data, <laughs> albeit I'll put out a graphic content she, warning. Yeah, one of them kind of... seem to be quite squished. I look over at SETI. <laughs> Uh, I think you and, should take a look at it. Uh, yeah, uh, Moon kind of gets up to go check over and takes a look. Oh. Hmm. She kind of grimaces, um, but keeps staring directly at it. Uh, Asher, this is definitely an interesting uh, form. Yeah, yeah, uh, what Asher was gonna do was cut in front of Moon and stop Seti from, like, seeing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can do that real fast. <laughs> I... I don't think you're really ready for that yet. Uh, okay, give me a give me a vague description though. How did it how did it pilot? Uh, it's some kind of be... neuralink. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> Silas first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. From what we can gather, it was some kind of neural link facilitated by what appeared to be some catalytic fluid, which allow which facilitated the uh, the entire process. It wasn't their blood, but it was mixed in with it, I imagine purely because of the physical injuries that it sustained. Yeah. Fascinating. We, we do um, have a clean sample of it, so we're hoping to get some, any information on how it's just chemically made. Nice. So to, I guess, add yeah. to this report, <clears throat> the way it moved through the sky was almost natural. It moved <laughs> completely like as if it belonged there the fact that the flight unit was able to keep up with it only worked because duck sent out an advanced pulse thing you know <clears throat> uh she gestures uh, around she has no idea I, what the yeah yeah can i uh, sorry christian can i uh roll my uh person my custom skill to see if what? uh i can piece off something together and rolls mine that's been on my mind um, um what's your custom just trigger say it? <clears throat> it's not it's not in the thing yet but i'll i can read it out to you yeah on comp con give me a second yeah uh so to i'm going to actually comp. cut forward for the sake of time um yeah. the custom trigger essentially is uh the way i think i remember i worded it it's in latin and dumb but the way i <laughs> uh <laughs> the way i worded it was essentially like um using my education type ability yeah. so he's just trying to call upon say, Call upon what? your internalized uh, knowledge to solve a current problem. Yeah, I would say no, because this is alien technology. So, um, the biggest thing here is, um, as you sort of speak up on this, actually, I did want to 
uh, have Moon step up here and bring something up. Uh, cool. When you are mentioning the um, alien technology and the weight boost of this guy, she uh, she's like, Steady, uh, that's that's all fine and good. This is an interesting report. I'm more curious about what you mentioned in your report about alien, uh, the confusion in their ranks. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, <sighs> uh, this might tangent a little bit. Are you all ready for that? I've been talking to, I've been talking to the soldiers in the trenches. If Oof, you could keep, sorry. if you could keep irrelevant information, especially from people like them, I, uh, to a minimum, then I would appreciate it. Okay. Um, she, uh, she folds her arms. It has to do with the glassing. Hmm. Right. So, <laughs> during the battle, I was keeping very close Overwatch, watching my team basically disperse out into um, out into a uh, burning woodland. In my observation, I noticed a few things. Primarily, our enemy was running and fleeing. The way we fought them, also specifically, their actions and reactions matched one to one our own. It was confusion. Hmm. The UEA and the aliens both were reacting to the glassing in the same way. We're trying to survive right now. She starts tapping her foot. <laughs> Specifically, the enemy frame that I encountered uh, was attempting to keep a close eye on us to see if it could follow our positions to see if we got a heads up on where comms would be fully established. Based on the UEA and their own performance, we can come to a few different conclusions. She raises her fingers. <clears throat> Primary. If we're talking about the glassing, <clears throat> obviously she like motions around at the uh, room. Everyone here assumes aliens did it, right? Alien invasion. I mean, um, yeah, based on tech. Pops kind of nods <clears throat> and just kind of stares forward at you. It could have been now, anyone. <clears throat> she nods. The soldiers in the trenches actually uh, proffered another theory that there is some sort of <laughs> she... oh my god you're bringing the zombie oh, no. theory to the I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> literally uh literally said he like not she's like okay there's another theory that's actually circulating around with the uea boys their chain of command is literally so disorganized that there could have been some sort of internal ploy conspiracy theories are running wild right now that this is some sort of inside job, that the glassing is caused by some sort of human force. And that would corroborate the evidence presented to us by the aliens and their actions and reactions. Uh, she wiggles a third finger and she's like, I actually like to put out a third theory. Um, <clears throat> now, this could have been the result of gross incompetence, which is highly likely, but I'll actually wager money. In the next few weeks, we're going to be hearing from some sort of third force that's going to take credit for it. Mm. Honestly, the, the fact that it's coming from the middle of a large-scale city actually leans to some sort of terrorism or some other functional equivalent. Think about it this way. Why would the aliens invade and glass a planet? They get nothing from it. Why would the UEA glass a planet? They get nothing from it. This place is a resource mine. No one gains anything. So, she wiggles her finger around. <clears throat> I'm willing to bet in the next few weeks, we're going to be hearing from someone somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> Moon kind of, uh, nice speaks guess up. Work. Yeah, Moon kind of, uh, speaks up. Thank you for the report. Um, I'm only, considering that, I'm only going to consider one through line. No matter what's the case here, everyone's confused. Am I correct? Mm. Yeah, everyone on all sides. Everybody's big goal in the immediate is just survival. She kind of, that uh, may be that. the only useful piece of information that you said during that entire spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> like, there's there's definitely some interesting theories. Um, the, <laughs> and possibly, theories, the fact nonetheless, that... conjecture. Study, study puts her hands behind her head. When the mysterious terrorist organization Cypher Claw emerges in three weeks, <laughs> Roll pokes her in the silence. ribs when she raises her arms. <laughs> uh, Pop speaks up. No, no, I, I don't think 
it's very rightly to shut down a theory like that until we get more information. Um, Moon kind until of, uh, we, but I'm until going Until we to. get more information. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Moon says, I'm going to for now. Seti, thank you for the report. The information about <laughs> the <laughs> confused lines will be important. It answers one question. Um, she decided to kind of... <laughs> oh, man. So, oh. It, let, let, it, like, looks over to Seti and just quietly says, so let's pretend for a moment these aliens were confused and they were looking for comms. Yeah. Why look for comms? Do you think, again, complete conjecture, that they thought it was maybe a way to contact us to clear the air? Maybe. Or something, or? Or maybe. I doubt it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it open fired. If not, it's like, why invade a planet if you're not going to use it? Why set fire to a house that you're going to move into? They. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she's familiar Moon with war strategies. Up. Hang up. Moon speaks up and she's like, quit it with the conspiracies for a moment, please. Yes, 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 yes ma'am. <laughs> Stands up straight. I have an important thing to talk yeah. about then. It seems Thank like you. in general, supplies lines are currently broken apart. And I can tell you, we have we are running out of food in the next couple of days. Yeah. So if it turns out that currently everyone's trying to survive, I'm going to start putting aside some resources to see if we can do that too. I no longer think it's very reasonable that we're going to be able to start working out some kind of deal for supplies or bonus type of food for the UEA for a contract. So I'm just throwing out the window. I'm hardly sure anyone we could team up with right now would have any sort of use for that. I'm not even going to try to negotiate for it. Uh, instead, she kind of uh, pick one up. Uh, one thing was sort of sorted now. Uh, by bringing up that and corner bringing that, we sort of have the topic of how do we survive? How do we survive here? And it seems like currently you've been able to isolate the fact that you guys are mostly alone and that if one thing, Moon sort of speaks up again, we could take from a positive from that sort of interaction is that at the very least now, we probably have some time before people start knocking more seriously. That idiot, egotistical fucking lieutenant over there can't do shit once we get this done and we can kick his ass out if we really want to. Yeah. And then we probably have a couple of weeks. I apologize for bringing them back here, but killing 12 soldiers would bring its own issue. Uh, he turns, that's out of the question, yeah. And don't apologize, boy, that was my command. He kind of turns over, look, we're solving this problem now, and once we manage to sort all this out, we'll be able to find some more information about food. We're continuing the ration plan until we can start branching out. Um, <clears throat> Moon kind of uh, checks over, and then she's just like, uh, uh, she kind of asks a question, and when she asks this question, uh, Helena, you feel like a prickle in the back of your, your on, all through your back, basically, connecting like a phantom sensation on your spinal implant. As Moon asks, Pops, am I putting you in as company leader? Directly to Pops, with Silas standing directly in between <laughs> right <laughs> now. <laughs> Looks at Silas and just shakes her head. No, don't sh don't say a fucking word. <laughs> Silas stands up and goes, considering that Pops seems to have an issue with distributing information correctly, I don't think that would be particularly wise. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moon kind of um, considers uh, uh, the question a little bit. as She sort of just puts a piece of paper and she checks across. Pops is like, Joke of command. I'm planning to do this through. And Moon just kind of turns over and uh, looks over to Silas. Who would you put forward? Myself, obviously. Yes, obviously. Uh, she kind of just says sort of under her breath that she's sort of like, all right, well, that sort of brings in a question I need to get answered for how we file this. Are we a, what kind of company are we forming here? Is this going to be a centralized command? Are we all technically independent contractors? How's this working? I'm going to just break this really apart right here. This is a sort of question more about how much autonomy. If you think of this yeah. more in character, how much autonomy would you like in company decisions? Do you want someone to just kind of answer the questions and go out and do your jobs? Do you want to have to choose things yourself and maybe have less support from the company? Oh, I I know I know what my character's opinion is, so she will blurt in as she always does. <clears throat> independent contractors, right? <laughs> She kind of just checks. That's one for that. 
centralized leadership with pops and salaries is another option. Mm. I mean, not to be that lady, but I do like a good corporation run well. They have served me well for quite some time. Independent contracting does have its benefits, so I'm not if opposed we have, to dabbling. If we have independent contracting, then there will be a complete breakdown in communication. Right. Yeah. But there's nothing if, wrong with having a central organization that does a couple side jobs. I can understand that there is some benefit to having people who are able to make independent decisions without having to consult anybody. There is certainly uh, benefit to that. However, kind of, yeah, yeah, keep going. When it comes to a situation like this, especially if we're going to be involved in combat or any kind of tactical or strate strategic operations, even if we do any kind of contracting, I would recommend that we at least have some sort of unequivocal and unquestioned leader who will actually be listened to and who will be organized around. Otherwise, none of this will work. If, Especially if someone like Spoiler is able to simply just say, I can do what I want, and then fuck off into the night. Yeah, he just convinced me. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say, that is also what I'm getting at. That's why I do think we need some form of leadership. But uh, we can't have one guy. You need managers, okay? Yeah. Uh, Asher that much I can agree with. Raises his hands. Moon kind of looks over. What I'm going to propose is that Moon, Pops, and Silas all hold similar positions. She kind of considers that. I'm not very interested in a leadership role. I Which like. Means you're I like Mr. Halloween. <laughs> I like Mr. Halloween's idea, and Seti, you raise a good point. That is exactly what I was going to say as well. Mm. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> as, she, she just like, just like this, the like, just kind of like clears, like clicks her throat, right there, <laughs> and she's like, she's like, right, logistics role. I will remain in that position, and if you give me some form of command over that department, I will take that. Um. Allow Pops me to sell like, you. Sorry, go ahead. Pops kind of a. I do like the way. Uh, I guess a three chair board. It'll help us make decision making. Gives us enough people to make quick, snappy decisions, but also we have tiebreakers. That is actually what I was going to mention as well, and I am at least glad that we see eye to eye on that front. I was going to sell you on it a little further with such a point as well, Moon. With three of us, there is always going to be a majority without any, without any question. Two out of three of us will always have to make a decision one way or another. You being hesitant for the leadership role are going to be a good grounding point. And as much as I would like to be the commander of this, I am not blind. And I understand that most of you would not be confident in me. Well, yeah, if it was a public vote, I don't think you'd win. <laughs> Silas. Which is exact, just kind of blurts out. Which is exactly why I put myself up for it. Apropos of myself. <laughs> Silas, me not having you as the individual sole leader of this group is not a question of your authority or skill. It's simply a tactical decision. If we have one leader, they can just die and move our left, disorganized as we are now. I am not so blind as to believe that there is no reason to do it the way that we are suggesting. I will accept as much. I appreciate it. Moon is like, all right, good enough. Uh, she sort of uh, makes down a note. In terms of independent teams, are we, are we drifting towards officially sanctioned squads? I don't think we have enough people for that. I think if we're going by the contractor metric, then it would be more a case-by-case -case basis and finding people who are more suitable for each individual mission and given task. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, Moon is sort of like, all right, very well. Uh, I'm putting it down. She makes a note. And then after that, she sort of just like taps her pen a few times um, as she sort of just considers all right. Once this goes live, there's going to be people breathing down our neck. Um, just to keep it intact, we're not... There was mentioned before, but we're not actually going to be planning to attempt to merge with another company, right? 
Not an so, eye for a stable future, I guess. No, no, you go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, it's fine. Uh, I think merging with another company as of now would be just asking for us to be dismantled immediately. Right. Um, uh, Moon, Moon sort of puts it down. Well, all right then. Uh, she kind of uh, considers really quick. She's going to uh, uh, read down. You've got independent contracting. Um, we have a decent branch of people. This is starting to look more like Milky Circle Merc Company from what I remember. Um, she sort of looks down um, and she kind of uh, considers it a little bit. She's just like, well, all right then. If anyone wants to take on their own personal contracts with any sort of organization, you have to clear that with us. If that starts bringing heat on the company, then I'm going to have to cut you loose on that front. So consider your contracts carefully and don't drag other people into it. Sunny so puts up a hand immediately. Mm, she looks over. What's the opinion on bounty hunting? She kind of uh, considers that forward mode. Uh, you say foolish and she's just like, opportunities, go for them. Excellent. <laughs> Sunny <he> goes quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to... I would like to posit that if you do so, then you would make a point of making it so that you are not directly associated with us when you are bounty hunting. Salutes. And if I were to have my way, then I would say that you would not be using company equipment when you do such bounty hunting, but that is why we now have the committee, I suppose. Roll spins, <laughs> Roll spins on his chair, and by all means, please do engage with more experienced mech pilots. That will turn out fine. Uh, Moon Sunny looks, looks over, at, cut Sunny the looks at all of yeah. you trying to rep her down and goes, uh -huh. Done, pointing at Silas. Mm -hmm. Done, pointing at Raul. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then, like, leans up against the walls like, cool, then we're in agreement. Moon kind of checks across, <laughs> and she looks at everyone in the room and how they're talking to each other. And she looks down on her page. And she goes oh, no. and makes a personal note. And she just goes, hire HR guy. And <laughs> 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 <sighs> PC unlocked, baby. <laughs> Um, as she considers that, and then, uh, she kind of makes a note of that as well, as, um, looking across, she's just like, are we, she, she kind of, uh, considers that for a moment, and then she's just like, um, uh, kind of puts down the piece of paper for a second and kind of rubs her brow as she just sort of looks across for a moment. Okay. All right, you know what? I'm not going to let that slide. She kind of stops up and kind of looks uh, up at both of you. And she sort of just uh, claps her hands really quick to sort of just grab attention in the room as she sort of looks across. Look, I know shit's kind of tough right now with everything that just happened. But I need all of you to... I need you all to sort of uh, consider for a moment. Uh, she sort of turns over to uh, Raoul. Uh... This is not really the time to make quips at your fellow pilots, nor is it the time to make quips at your fellow personnel, uh, your new leadership brass. Um, she sort of turks over at everyone. When we're going to do this, I need to know, why are you all doing this? Why the hell are you picking up these weapons and going out and trying to take these mechs to go fight some enemies you've never seen before? Is it revenge? Is it some kind of personal grudge? Easy money. <laughs> she sort of glances around the moon uh, the room really fast as she just looks at the everyone. The moon! The moon! Dead, dead silence from Seti. She's like, ah, uh, uh, it's easier to act cocky when I can't. Uh, uh, somebody else go first. <laughs> Silas speaks up. If I'm, if you wish me to be completely brutally honest, it is because I desire a point of leadership. That is why I came here in the first place. I was not given enough power, and now I am in a position of power. And what's more, I will take being part of a three-person committee, especially considering that Arca has been destroyed. This is my ideal. There is one further step from here, but that is my ideal. She kind of thinks. Uh, she kind of stares at you for a moment. And it seems she sort of pushes a, th uh, like, kind of, you don't quite get what's in her eyes as much from the stare alone, but she sort of just looks over. That's adequate. That's a reason. I'll take it. Um, she looks over directly. Pops. Pops is kind of, uh, standing there. And you all sort of remember something. 
looking at Pops. When everything went down, you all have your own reactions you had to the disaster. Some were probably very immediately on point, not shaken. Others had their own reactions that were more shocked. Pops, you remember Pops breaking down in that very moment, panicking in every possible way, absolutely a failed leader. That was until he stood up about 10 minutes later and he made the proclamation to everyone. He made a proclamation, a cry, and got everyone organized to the nearest evacuation point that was listed. And then when that failed, he made this sort of declaration at the moment that they wouldn't sit down and die out here. Everything up until this point has been survival. This has been living in this sphere. These talks of being a company, this talks of all sorts of resistance type responses to everything going on around, all of that has been reactionary. And what Moon asks now is for a dedicated answer, your own foot forward, each and individually. And Pops' answer, as he sort of stands up again, and sort of looks around the room. I lost my whole family in Ingrest. Five kids, a wife, one missing up on the space crew. I'm not letting this go unanswered, I suppose. If you all have your own desires for a company, or if you wish to leave, that's fine with me. But personally, as much as it's not fit for my character, I am interested in a little revenge. She kind of uh, looks and then sort of puts down the note. And her attention drifts over to the other four uh, that are across from her. She just kind of stares at you guys, waiting for one of you to speak up next. Asher uh, steps up. It's simple. Loyalty is my only resource. When I joined this company three years ago, I never planned on leaving, and I'm not gonna leave now. She sort of checks on over. Uh, looks at Raoul next. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want, do you want someone else first? <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh... Well, I'm in a bit of a shit spot here, aren't I? Lost my family, lost my money, lost my reputation, I lost my name. I'm dead, legally. You saw it on the news, too. And leaving? Really, Pops? Please tell me how we're gonna walk out into the wasteland of burning ash and fire and come out the other end alive to a happy little city that's not being affected by the war. Let's face it, we're fucking stuck here. And if we're gonna be stuck here, might as well resist. He just sort of kind of takes a second and nods at that. He drifts her attention over to uh, Helena and Seti, who are kind of both in the corner right now. <clears throat> Seti's eyes fidget over to Helena, and she's like, slowly exhales, like nods once, and she's gonna take a step forward. <clears throat> um, for me, uh, okay, this is gonna sound awful <clears throat> especially considering everything that everyone just said for me i see an actual opportunity i was sent here functionally to be carried down with gold brick weighted to my chest you all got the check to take me in i'm sure that the money served you well she like sort of starts to tap her foot nervously <clears throat> I'm a person who had to be gotten rid of in a humane way. So, um, uh, I was here to work as a construction worker, primarily, for however long that went. Um, she, like, exhales. I know survival rate on Earth 3 is not particularly great. And, um, it's wreaked hell on my body. I'm, uh, I'm from Earth 12. She, uh, like, folds her arms. Now, now that brick's been lifted off. I don't know if people are still looking for me. I don't know if I'm gonna keep getting pressed down into this location, but you guys have done me a favor. You've given me wings. I'm gonna fly as far as I possibly can. I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, I guess. 
to kind of uh Roll makes a bitter face and <laughs> turns to the side. <laughs> uh and she kind of uh just she seems to accept that answer as she turns over to Helena. Yeah, Helena takes out her cigar and just kind of looks at it. I worked for Bullworm for nearly 40 years with one job, keep people safe. That was it. I did that for so long and I made so much money that I got forcibly retired. And I came here to continue making sure people stay safe. My home is gone. Our home is gone. And we don't know where my son is. This is the next best place he'd come. It's our second home. So, I'm gonna keep doing what I've always done. Do my best to keep folks safe. And yeah, wait for my son. Moon considers that, she puts it down. Now that I know you're all taking this seriously, she sort of, um, we're ready to go. I'm going to allow starting to file paperwork. I've been keeping notes to make sure everything has this uh, exact list of criterias or else we're boned. So, and then she stops. She sort of checks a note. Wait, shit. Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. She sort of stops as she puts a paper down and she starts scratching her head a little bit. That's annoying. What you got there? What happened? Uh, she sort of turns around. Uh, if I'm correct, um, I mean, I remember earlier when I was chatting with that stupid bonehead lieutenant, he had mentioned something about Arca being destroyed, gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's also a stupid statement. No, it's not. Yeah, sure. It's entire headquarters have been wiped off the map, but that's not how this shit works. Uh, she sort of turns over governments in exile, different forces of government that just find themselves uh, shoved off. Unrest is a prefecture itself, and most of it's probably on fire right now, but there's still listed agents that exist and are op operating probably in Everett right now. If there is any sort of total, uh, if there's anything, any upper agent at all that survived, uh, they're going to be asking for assistance and resettlement. They're going to exist, even if they do nothing for the next five years. They have paperwork. They have legal right to call them themselves arca we do not so we got to be something else she sort of just thinks yeah i hate naming things i'm fucking throwing out the table here what 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 the hell are we calling ourselves <laughs> and when this question hits the air arguably the easiest lightest topic that could be discussed in terms of that yeah. Turns into a blow. However, <laughs> uh, 20 minutes later, <laughs> everyone's moved on into the other room. There are drinks. People are sitting around. Put yourself wherever the fuck you are if you're standing, sitting, whatever the hell. Um, no one said anything that fucking sounds good. Everything's been asked so far. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, Wax Wings is a sick ass name. <laughs> <laughs> it, that, it melts. It's Icarus. He died. Okay, Ica Icarus is an even better name. Why not? Why not that? <laughs> he died. He died. He <laughs> lost. <laughs> Icarus is already a patented company. Uh, we can't do that. Okay, what happened to them? Are they still alive? They're on Earth Six. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not know that? Did you, did you not take any politics class? Can we just be Arca 2? It's so easy. <laughs> no, no, we cannot be Arca 2. That is not legally distinct at all. Plus, calling ourselves a construction company is a blatant, misleading aspect on any sort of marketing we would do. We cannot be Arca 2, so give it a rest. And do not, for the love of God, do not try to make a different acronym again. Okay, Bye. okay. What of Orca. <laughs> <laughs> The killer uh, whale. It'd <laughs> probably be somewhat classless for me to throw out Cypher Claw right now, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Because if they are the real third bad guys, yeah, yeah. we're going to get looped in with them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, what if we're like, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to like smash glass. Like, oh, I mean, glass blowers, but like. Oh, yeah. You know? No. Yeah. I don't. No. Blowers. <laughs> Stained glass. I don't the know. Stains. No, that makes us sound like 
I gross. still don't understand why South Angress Mercenary Company is not fine. <laughs> Pops South kind of speaks Angress up, Mercenary. kind of rubbing Sam. his his head as he's Sam. just like, Sam. not only is the acronym ass, but also it's just too basic. <laughs> Look, that's not gonna be Milky Circle Merc Company. A Look, company. they're they're. Yeah, it's, I honestly think that's a stupid ass name too. But that's, that's what we're dealing with competitor wise. So it is memorable. It yeah. is. It is the Milky Boys, Milk Runners, Milky Circle. There's oh, a brand. Yeah, that's pretty good. Their logo's a goddamn glass of milk. I haven't even fucking seen a cow before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, they did okay, go okay. extinct five, five, around 500 okay. years ago. Now we don't even get me started on their mommies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what do we have in the area? People who are from here. What is like a signature thing Wait. of the area around here? Yeah. Ash. Got a, Ash okay. Seti. Sure, sure. But <laughs> we, we are the only folks that are going to be driving lads, right? Yeah. We're the mad lads. Oh. Right. Moon speaks up. We're going to be abandoning those pieces of junks once we get actual military mechs. Right, but that's what makes us crazy. <laughs> we're fucking we're using mad. them now. I don't <laughs> want our company to sound like it's some fucking Oculus gang. Do you understand that? We I are going to send the means. wrong impression. <laughs> yeah, you, you would, uh, small boy knows. You would know that the Oculus gangs are located on the more sunny side of the planet. That's where spoilers from. Yeah. That's sort of her deal. It's why she went to jail. Slow creaking movements looks over to Asher. Yeah. You've been quiet? You got a name cooking? Yeah, you know, you you used to do military stuff, right? So you probably heard some good military names, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Creaks back in the other direction, looks over to Silas. Right. <laughs> oh, everyone creeps back! <laughs> creaks back! Everyone's looking to Silas, and like, the, the, <laughs> he, he just kind of like looks around, he's got his arms crossed, he's mainly just been listening, and you think he's gonna launch into some speech, but then he just very, <laughs> very bluntly just goes, Pain threshold. <laughs> Everyone looks back at Asher! Everyone looks back at Asher! Yeah, Asher, what do you got? <laughs> we could always name it after our old boss. I was suggesting we named it after your new boss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it would be like what, Moon Brigade? <laughs> Don't put my name on it. What's, uh, what's the thing you're pops, suggesting, Asher? Pops, uh, I, I can't think of anything. Painful moon soda. No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> say, that. I don't say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this ain't working. The old uh, yeah, boss's Asher, name. The yeah. old boss's name was uh, Kane Conra. We could always be Conra Company. Conra Co. Yeah, that's uh, not shabby. Uh, Honestly, I, I kind of just like Conrad Comp. Yeah. Conrad Company is good, but you know what we're going to get? Like, you were talking about the milk. We're going to be con men. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, I guess we are. It's spelled with That's K. a little easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, is everyone cool with that? Uh, I mean, it's I something. Know. It's the best uh, one we got yet. <laughs> Someone's targeting like me. Oh, Show yourself, um, Nave. <laughs> I mean, I guess I do. I think it's me. <laughs> Pops yeah, kind of gets a little sullen for a fact. I miss the old man, so I would be quite happy to honor his memory with the company. He did keep care of us after all. Oh. Does that Some... answer your question, Moon? She seems like. I'm not gonna be happy with any name that's brought up. So I leave it to you all. Sure. <laughs> that's why we've got a panel now. We'll check with the other two what they think. Oh God. I'd like so to go for it. I bet Duck can come up with a good name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pop is like, well, I'll go with Conrad Company. What about you? Turns over to uh, Silas. Well. I assume that you won't be accepting any form of name which includes a reference to myself. <laughs> so instead, 
So instead, allow me. <laughs> <laughs> instead, allow me to suggest something perhaps a little bit more palatable for you. Cons it might be a little bit morbid, but I find it to be perhaps a twisting of a bad situation to something perhaps a little bit more positive. This all started with the glassing. We are trying to find a way forward to see clearly. Maybe something as simple as clear. Oh. That's taken. That's, so That's yeah. literally taken. Raul, Raul, you speak up almost in that moment because clear was your company's name, and they're still active out there, too, so it brings Silence, up the same thing. Silence, please! Yeah, that's, Silence, that's, please. That's, uh, that's why please I brought it up. Please take a look at that. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Silence, please take a look at that couch right there and tell me who made it. <laughs> he, he does, and he goes, Damn, I was unaware that that was taken. My <laughs> <laughs> God damn... Uh, what, is, what the hell were they even, Ral? They made... They made furniture and cosmetics. What the hell did they do? What were they even listed as? Basically everything. Honestly, they started as a shipping company, and then from shipping, they, they took over. Uh, they got a monopoly on the housing market, and then from there on, they, came, they went to cosmetics, uh, weapon production. Right, uh, right. So they'll, they'll get on our ass. All right, thanks. Uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, and they also have their own private, uh, private funded, albeit by a puppet, a sock puppet company, a uh, military group. Well, great. I'm sure they're they're uh, fucking clear. I I'm terrible at these goddamn names, God. <laughs> he, he just like oh, pops just dirty. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the dirty works. That's it. Dirty Perhaps uh, sewer co. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. Like, Another thing to imply stability in a time of, in a time that of upheaval, mm. and also to ring back to our construction what about... company origin foundation. Oh, the foundation, the foundation, foundation. Uh, we're not a foundation. Foundations imply a non-profit organization that is apart from the government. Silas at his head so goes. Silas in his head is like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Non-profits? What are those? <laughs> said, he's <Useless>. still, <laughs> said he's still on the same bit as like, Blood Moon. Pointing at Silas <laughs> and then Moon. <laughs> Katsuki, that's copyright. <laughs> moon. I, I'm uh, sorry, I couldn't work pops into head. it. it it's Wait, weird. guys, I got it. Edwin Ward's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, chat. What uh, about uh, Tartarus? Moon's just like, why? We're coming back from hell to take what it's ours. I don't get the reference. Is that an old myth thing? Yeah, it's an yeah. old myth thing. Earth one. Old mythology, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. I don't. Uh, she kind of just thinks about it. Look, so far, Conra Tartar Company sounds. has <laughs> been the most, uh, the nicest sounding thing. It doesn't really have much brandability, but if we're not really aiming uh, for that anyways, with all the people we got here that are wanted, then I think that might be for the best. It, it does, actually, because if you want to shorten it, it can be Coco, which is cute. I think that would be... Not, no, I don't Our think logo that would could be, be Hot Coco. That would be actually very nice. It would be oh. Coco. It would be Coco. It wouldn't be Coco. Oh, how was his name spelled? K A N R A. Oh, that's Conra not what I thought. Company. And there's no K on the company either, so before you think about that, no. <laughs> Puts a hand up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That escalated K -K unnecessarily. Slide. Yeah, it did. It really did. <laughs> that's, this, that's been this entire conversation so okay, far. Okay, 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 okay. So, why are the Milky Boys called the Milky Boys? We are you know, not calling ourselves question. the Milky Boy. No, we we're not. It's already taken. <laughs> this is insightful. This is research. Where Why does are the, the name Milky come Boys? From? Yeah, yeah. Because we can just steal cross... their naming method. <laughs> they are the Milky Way, Milky Circle, Milky Way Mercenary Company. They are a cross-planet mercenary company that works close in hand with shippers and other organizations. Thus, their name suggests a large-scale galactic effort. Oh, Milky okay. Way Crossroads Mercenary Crossroads Company. Crossroads company. Oh, Conrad Crossroad if, Company. <laughs> if we want to go with a locational-based thing, then might we 
take inspiration from one of the unique aspects of this planet, namely the fact that we are in eternal twilight. Mm. She kind of looks over. Twilight Mercenary Company. Keep it simple, keep it clean. That is actually something that I find quite palatable. TMC. (laughs) (laughs) So he's like nodding and bouncing like, okay, yeah, I can deal with that. They kind of stop there for a bit and it's just like, I still don't like it. Moon just kind of speaks up as he's just like, (laughs) all right, Moon, here's the deal, honey. If you're gonna shit on every idea like a fucking seagull, why don't you have any suggestion? <laughs> yeah, right, no, fine. hit us with your best um, shot. Fine, fine. She yeah. stops. She don't say of it. Icarus, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> or do. She of it. Um, fine. Don't um, provoke. <laughs> um, let me, uh, just really quick. Uh, okay, she's yeah, just that's like, um, um. Shin Megami uh, Tensei. Uh, <laughs> She just kind of thinks about that a little bit for a mo- moment. Um, uh, re- South Angres Mercenary Company. Again, no. look, it's fine. No. It's simple, no. descriptive. It tells our location. It's everything we need to know. Different. We already poo-pooed that one. Another one. I, fine. <laughs> I would put forward as someone who has some degree of interest in making this expedient that we seem to have our best reaction sans yourself moon to twilight mercenary company Mm. she just kind of thinks about that i she she just kind of like thinks about it and it doesn't specify the location of our base for enemy attacks so we'll have to do a little bit more intel gathering leans over to moon we can thesaurus it we could call ourselves like half light mercenary mm-hmm. company does that work better for you how about this Pretty sure that's gone correct she turns over to <laughs> to uh asher again we've had a many good suggestions what we should just do is write them all down and have the whole entire company vote on which one they prefer that's that sounds reasonable yeah it's all probably right. the yeah, best course fine. of action okay yes yeah, so we're gonna do that so well, leave all of the names. After all, <laughs> leave all of the name slots blank and sort out the paperwork and everything else done. Last day after the poll, I'll just write them all down. I'll just run through every paper, put down our name, fill in the blanks, and we'll be good to go. Are we gonna let chat decide this? No, we're not letting chat <laughs> fucking no. decide. No, it. no, I'm letting, yeah. I'm letting the fucking players decide it. Actual yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> Actual humans. <laughs> uh, I just. <clears throat> I just, uh, I just bartered for a bunch of rations from people in the trenches. I can bribe people over to Icarus. <laughs> if you do that, then it's deserving of the name. Damn straight. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, I, don't give, don't give the GIs any votes. All right, they're not part of our company. Yeah, no, no, I just have the means now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That don't go to corrupt. Don't rig this voting. Look, we I just established a democratic process. Don't go corrupting it already, Seti. That's what makes it democratic. It's corrupt. <laughs> the, two, the two are like nodding simultaneously. Oh, you have never worked in a company. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. You're going to fill out your paper. You're going to put it in the box. And the person with the box is going to be Silas. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Then Silas will count out the votes himself. Double checked by Moon and Pops, just to make sure it's accurate. Nothing against you, just democracy at work. <laughs> and there we have it. We have a name, whether it's bad or good. A name is a name, and if it's bad, we'll make it good ourselves. All right. Exactly. A reputation is more right. worth worth more than a name. Right. Okay. Good. That's that's what I wanted to know. That's we're good. That's clear. Um, she sort of stands up and no, kind of, uh... It's not clear. That's the other company. What? Oh, <laughs> shut yeah. up! She... Roll cringes. <laughs> Sunny laughs. Helena appreciates that. <laughs> she, um, kind of snaps. Fine, I'll go grab one of the... One of the damn food cartons. Mm-hmm. Pops kind of, uh, checks on over. Good shit, gang. Yeah. 
I genuinely thought Silas was going to sit down. I now have taken her seat. I hold two seats of power. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. If you move yeah. it, then you lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know management is just musical chairs? <laughs> she places down a stuff. She grabs some of the papers that needed to be redone that Seti had uh, written some stuff on, and she starts tearing them into little slips to, and just starts like writing down like uh, names on the front of people in the company um, and starts like designating which sides is the front and all of that stuff. All right. Okay, sure. We'll get this around. Mm -hmm. We'll figure that out. Yes. And I assume- Might I suggest as well that rather than us having a single vote that everybody has three and you list them in order of priority of one, two, and three yep. in order to oh. give everybody a chance to give a sec worst case scenario preference if we have enough uh if we have enough names for that then sure yes good yes. um ash is going to turn to uh the three the three heads of fucking cerberus over there yeah uh, <laughs> Oh, we could have called it Cerberus! <laughs> <laughs> no, there's like, in so much media, everything's uh, called Cerberus. Um, so I assume you all want Boss's uh, previous paperwork? Yes. Yes. Just a warning, I'll include the stuff that he doesn't even want to be seen. Oh, yeah, I did forgot about that. You and Boss real close. Yes. Well, we got some of that, yeah, share it out. Mm -hmm. He also probably has some filing cabinets in his room that I'll have transported over here for Moon's paperwork, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Moon's like, yes, yes, that'll be fine. Okay. What if we were conversational? I'm just gonna con converse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love just size of what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that came out off guard because he's so used to, like, generally kind of being on board with what Helena yeah. says. Yeah. <laughs> he was genuinely just surprised. Mm -hmm. Just being cheeky. Continue. <sighs> right. Good. Okay. We're going to get on that. I need to pick up paperwork. Pops Allow me to the... assist. All right. You both uh, head up and start picking up papers. And actually, I'm going to follow perspective there for a second. As um, you uh, step on out and you hear more discussion going back. A few more names being listed, uh, Silas. Um, mm. Once you're out here, uh, Moon kind of looks over to you. And she sort of, as she's picking up papers, and you are too, um, she kind of uh, checks. Silas? Yes. I have a uh, question for your, your um, you have expertise in um, cutthroat businesses in your past, correct? Yes, that is one way of putting it. Um, she kind of goes over, starts collecting papers. Um, I'm going to pass out that same message to other people on staff. Uh, of course, I'll give you the report as I always do. Um, as you kind of uh, step up and start taking these, uh, she sort of goes over um, collects these last papers that are stacked up on the table, um, and, uh, you start kind of picking some stuff up, too, as, um, she sort of, like, uh, turns back again, and she's just kind of like, how often, during your time with this type of stuff, have you seen people break? You almost, there's almost a moment where you think that Silas might ask for clarification, but quite disturbingly, maybe, he doesn't need it. He knows exactly what she means. And he just goes, I used to live in a place where subservience and complacency was beaten into people. And if you couldn't take the beating, or if you couldn't change, then you would break. People are not as capable of remaining cogent as they might believe. We're capable of fooling ourselves, that much I've seen. But at the end of the day, when you heat a blade, it is only once you temper it that you can see whether or not it will shatter. She uh, considers that, and she's like, right then. 
than the last part of this. I'm going to hit you up a little bit later, and we're going to talk about how we manage the deceased. And she clicks up the papers, and with that, all questions she needed to know are answered. She steps back, moves off, and sort of puts it all stacked up on a table, grabs a pen as you take those extra ones as well, hold them together, and with that, you sort of just, all of you, are left with a lot of paperwork to do, just mindless, dull, dead easy paperwork. And it might be a little early, mm-hmm. but all the same, we've done everything I wanted to do. So speed run the paperwork. Speed run. I think that's actually where I'm gonna call it for today. Cool beans. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Hey, thank yeah. you. Thank you, dude. Mm-hmm. Really Savvy, fucking... hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Savvy, mm-hmm. hopefully you can actually get some good sleep tonight now. I hope. <laughs> I hope 3 a.m. is not too late. No, I mean, that, funny enough, it ending early means that it ended when I thought it would initially end before oh, daylight okay. saving time. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so this is actually perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> planned out, baby. Yeah, um, thank you. Nice. Dude, I I love playing Silas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I fucking adore I, I, oh, I, I love horrible, him. Horrible, horrible <laughs> I, loved, I loved everyone being kind of snippy sometimes. I loved... Oh, it was really good. Yeah. Dude, has a lot of everyone is so fucking great. <laughs> yeah. I I think my favorite interaction is Seti laying down all this information she's gathered and everything like that. And she's like, it's got some really good stuff. You kind of piece together that she's like, she's been talking to these people and she's getting information that she hasn't directly been asking. And then Silas is like, yeah, that's wow, great. This is, useless. Some, you fucking, this is fucking sucks. This is useless. Give us something more useful for this situation, idiot. And I just like, God. And obviously he has Honestly, logical reasons for saying that, yeah. but it's just, it's, if, it's really if Silas great. I didn't say that, Raul would have. Mm. <laughs> uh, dude, I, I am excited to see more interactions with, um, with Raul. Raul and and Asher with with Silas as well, mm-hmm. and also <laughs> interacting with Seti as Silas is just so good. She was she was gonna spend the next and she will spend the next few hours being like Silas, Silas, the jetpack worked. Silas, the jetpack worked <laughs> until oh, that, you lock her out. <laughs> that was also one of my favorite moments uh, yeah. besides yeah. Rombie is just the like going over. Yo, hell no, the jetpack worked. It did. Yeah, they thought it was military tech. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Helena is so funny because she's oh, like able her. to play both sides of the field of just being yeah. like, you know, mm. actually likable and also good at their job. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but who, yeah, let's. Uh, you know who else are good at their jobs? Who's oh, that? The fan artists. Uh, who, yes, you're Ooh, right. Put in fan art to us right now. Uh, thank yeah. you. Let me let me see. I think this was Lester 2020. I just assume it is because Lester 2020 does most of this. Uh, yeah, Lester. Lester 2020. There we go. What a machine, thank what a, you. What a machine. And as you can see, chat, I've made a oh, quick hero. fan art overlay for this, so it looks a lot better. <laughs> yeah, this looks nice. Uh, first off, from Dorkport, who made the lads. Yeah. 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 I love that. Uh, and then excellent. from Dark Destiny, uh, the we have... 3D render. Uh, yeah. The... Yeah, this is coming along great. <laughs> they got no bitches. No, they got bitches. no bitches. They got no bitches. The aliens fucking suck, man. Uh, and then from... <laughs> the stem, look at the stem <laughs> sticking out of his leg. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All good down here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Pops, you and your howitzer. Mr. Yeah. Mention to do something kind of stupid. Fellas, fellas, we got the cannon. <laughs> you <laughs> <pick a surprise. laughs> Come on. Tell you, mech fuel can't melt transparent aluminum, man. <laughs> <laughs> crazy shit. <laughs> and then from BH Behemoth, we got it's Moon. Connected the dropship, the MRU smuggling routes, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Where the babes? <laughs> Where the oh, babes? <laughs> oh, Grumpy. <laughs> That's Grumpy Sergeon. Oh, yeah, Grumpy Sweep. <laughs> what a, I want to offer a theory of a third option, another involved party. <laughs> Fucking Cypher Claw. <laughs> what a nice Pain threshold. Pain threshold. <laughs> that was Jesus. so fucking so good. good. I, I want to make it clear as well that in his brain, it was spelt like his second name. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Pain yeah. threshold. Uh, P-A-Y-N-E. Uh, how wonderful. Also, also Grombie is Jesse Pinkman. You can't convince <laughs> me otherwise. 
That's just every voice I do whenever I do hey, a Mr. Like White! <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, yeah. You guys were great. Thanks uh, for hanging out, chat. Yeah. Uh, next time uh, will be uh, a little bit of a scavenging <laughs> mission with uh, the players yeah. Kaguya, Brennan, uh, then uh, CJ, who's playing Lunar, who you haven't seen on the channel before, and a fourth person I'm blanking on because I'm good at this. <laughs> you said Kaguya, Brennan, and Carl. Carl, yes, yeah, Carl. Carl. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that uh, will be uh, Fire and Finality. And yeah. the final session of this prologue arc. Yeah, and uh, if you want to support this, uh, make sure to check out Christian's Patreon, which is now uh, yeah. conveniently Christian Civet. That's his name right there. And yeah. If you want to check out yeah. the VOD, make sure to check out the YouTube where it will be posted tomorrow. And you can scrub all the all the things. Look at all the info, see all the stuff, and rewatch it again. Give it a like and a comment, and uh, it helps us out a lot. And uh, then, if you want to talk about the show, uh, some of us will see it, uh, and uh, talk with other fans, uh, we have a Discord that you can join and just talk for free. Please talk about the show. I like to read it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's read. yes. It's always great seeing everybody's reaction. Uh, especially fan theories. I fucking love them. Talk about my character, motherfuckers. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all. So, uh, yeah, yeah, if everyone, everyone wants to say bye. Bye, chat! Bye, chat! Bye.